Hare Krishna. We are discussing the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Transcendental Knowledge. And uh, we discussed the first ten verses already. In these ten verses, Krishna explained the parampara of this knowledge and also the divinity of his own appearance. How he appears, when he appears, for what purpose he appears, how to know him. So, he has given transcendental knowledge about himself. In the first uh, uh, ten verses we discussed up to this point. So, 11th verse till 15th verse, Krishna describes himself as the supreme creator and also the culmination of all paths. 11th verse. Yeyathamam prapadyante Tamstathaiva bhajamyaham Mama vartmanu vartante Manushyaha partha sarvashaham Krishna says, ye yatha maam prapadyanti. The way people approach him, uh, the way people surrender unto him in a specific manner. Tam stathaiva bhajami aham. I also reciprocate them, reciprocate with them in a similar way. The way you approach Krishna, similarly Krishna reciprocates with us. Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manushyaha Partha Sarvashaha. He says, Everyone follows my path. Means the paths are leading to him directly or indirectly. Okay. So everyone follows my path in all respects. O son of Pratha, he says. Now we need to understand, Ye Yatha Mam Prapadyante Tam Stathaiva Bhajami Aham. Means, the choice of approaching Krishna is within us. Okay? It's up to us how we want to approach. Even in our Bhagavatam classes also we discussed that either through karma process or jnana process or ashtanga process or bhakti process, ultimately you are reaching Him, Krishna. But you are realizing a partial aspect of Krishna only. So, for example, an Ashtanga Yogi meditates on Paramatma. So, basically, he is approaching Krishna only in his partial feature as Super Soul. And a Jnana Yogi may want to do a lot of philosophical analysis and cultivate knowledge and then he may end up in uh, the Brahma Jyoti. And uh, that also, he is reaching the effulgence of Krishna. Right? That is also a feature of Krishna. Fine. So, we need to understand that there are different ways in which people approach Krishna and according to their approach, they will realize some aspects of Krishna. May not be Krishna completely. Fine. Only by Bhakti Yoga, one can completely realize Krishna, his personality, his abode, his paraphernalia, his associates, everything. So, by other paths, one may, one's realization of the Supreme Lord is incomplete. So, Prabhupada gives this beautiful example. Milk. If there is a cup of milk, if I touch that milk with my hands, I will feel it is a liquid substance, it is hot, it is cold or whatever. That's all I understand about milk if I just use my sense of touch, uh, to touch the milk. Okay. And if I use my ears, uh, if I bring my ears in contact with milk, I will hear about that milk. Oh, this milk is uh, uh, cow milk, uh, this milk is packet milk or powder milk or whatever. So, you hear some description about that milk. If I see the milk, means if I just bring my eyes in contact with the milk, without bringing any other senses in contact, I will only see it as a white substance. It's in a nice cup or glass. Fine. Or if I just bring my nose in contact with milk, I will just get the aroma of the milk, fragrance. Fine. So, but if I drink the milk, if I put the milk in my mouth, then I will get complete understanding of the milk, complete uh, advantage of the milk. So, you are trying to bring your five senses in contact with the milk, but if I bring my tongue or mouth in contact with milk, I will get the nourishment from the milk and I will completely take advantage of that milk. So, although my ears and my nose and my eyes and my sense of touch 
also come in contact with milk my body cannot take complete advantage of that milk only by putting that cup of milk in my mouth then i will be nourished by it i will taste it and while drinking it my hands may come in touch my eyes may come in touch my nose may come in touch with the milk fine similarly by performing bhakti yoga alone one can get complete understanding of the supreme lord krishna one can completely realize krishna by the process of bhakti yoga and by other processes like uh, gnana yoga or ashtanga yoga etc so one may get an understanding of krishna very partially fine one may realize only partial features of krishna and not complete personality of krishna so ye yathamam prapadyante tam sthathaiva bhajamya ham so if we approach the lord through meditative process uh, or doing ashtanga yoga and all so krishna will definitely reciprocate in the capacity of a super soul but if you want krishna to reciprocate in the capacity of bhagavan the personality of godhead then bhakti is the best path recommended fine so prabhupada writes in this purport krishna is fully realized only by his pure devotees consequently krishna is the object of everyone's realization and thus anyone and everyone is satisfied according to one's desire to have him so yad yad dhiyata urugaya vibhavayanti tat tatva puh pranayase sad anugrahaya even if some people are approaching the lord through bhakti yoga also different bhaktas different devotees have different moods some see the lord as uh, sun some see the lord as uh, uh, supreme protector uh, as a master some see the lord as lover some see the lord as friend there are different rasas okay and some exclusively surrender to him in kevala mood right unalloyed love and affection without any tinge of even reverence and there are other people who worship him as supreme godhead with reverential feeling that is aishwarya gnana yukta bhakti and there other one is kevala bhakti fine so we need to understand that krishna is the culmination of all paths krishna is the person who ultimately awards the desires of all the people but depending on our approach he will reciprocate even when one worships demigods also ultimately he is worshiping krishna but it is avidhi purvakam krishna says after some time we will discuss more of it okay because when somebody is worshiping demigods it is krishna who makes the faith of these demigod worshipers steady and it is krishna who ultimately awards the benedictions uh, received by these demigod worshipers also and it is krishna who empowered the demigods to take care of their devotees fine so worship is directed towards krishna the benediction is coming from krishna but it's an indirect way ultimately without krishna factor nothing can move not a blade of grass moves in this world so different people reciprocate in different ways and also we should not quote this verse uh, to describe god's partiality it is not krishna's partiality oh e tham am prapadyante tam sthayo bhajami ham ani krishna says like this oh for devotees he will give more realization more facilities uh, more reciprocation more attention but uh, for those who are not his devotees then he may neglect them it's quite natural fine so it is the reciprocal nature of krishna not the partial nature of krishna right so now and different paths lead to different goals now you can't say i will do anything and i have to get the same goal okay and all krishna says here mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah everybody is ultimately pursuing krishna whether knowingly or unknowingly but different people approach him in different ways and krishna will reciprocate accordingly okay so the pure devotee is both here and in the transcendental abode associate with him in person and are able to render personal service to the lord and thus derive transcendental bliss in his loving service so devotees derive transcendental bliss because they directly engage in service of krishna and uh, there are some fruity workers proposes the lord awards the desired results of their prescribed duties as yagneshwara and there are yogis who are seeking some mystic powers and krishna will award those mystic powers also 
so now you are pursuing ashta anga yoga doing ashta angas uh, yama niyama all this angas and if your aspiration is to get ashta siddhis through this ashta angas eight kinds of practice you do to get eight kinds of perfection then krishna will award fine that's what is your desire i have given you independence i have given you free will and you want to utilize that free will to do something so i will reciprocate so like that different paths will lead to different goals but all these paths ultimately culminate in krishna either partially or completely fine you realize one aspect of krishna one feature of krishna one energy of krishna okay so purpose is here everyone is searching for krishna in different aspects of his manifestations so you may be aspiring to attain some object but you may not have understanding that that object is a manifestation of krishna's energy in that way in that sense you are realizing krishna in some ma- in some manner right but all paths do not lead to the same goal here we should not misunderstand the second line mama vartmanu vartante manushyah partha sarvashah everybody is ending up in uh, approaching krishna in some way whether directly or indirectly completely or partially in a, through his material energy or through his spiritual energy through demigods or through impersonal brahma jyoti or whatever so ultimately everything is a manifestation of krishna wherever you look at in this entire universe you will only end up in krishna but you may not realize it sometimes you will realize it sometimes depending on your mentality fine so that's why akamah sarva kama va moksha kama udaradhi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusha param what is recommended by shrimad bhagavatam is whether you have all desires whether you have no desires or whether you are aspiring for liberation better perform bhakti yoga unto krishna only you perform bhakti yoga and krishna will whatever may be your mood krishna will purify krishna will do the necessary purification of your mentality and then accept you as his eternal servant fine 12th shloka kankshantah karmanam siddhim kankshantah karmanam siddhim yajanta iha devataha yajanta iha devataha kshipram himanushe loke kshipram himanushe loke siddhir bhavati karmaja siddhir bhavati karmaja kankshantah karmanam siddhim okay krishna is speaking about demigod worship in this uh, uh, shloka so kankshantah you uh desire some results karmanam siddhim so they desire the fulfillment of their activities means they perform some activities they expect results very soon right yajanta iha devataah for the fulfillment of their desires through their activities they worship demigods yajanta iha devataah and kshipram himanushe loke kshipram is very quickly they may get results also siddhir bhavati karmaja karmaja the results born out of their fruitive activities they will quickly get by worshiping the demigods so that's why some people worship demigods now earlier krishna spoke in the previous verse about different degrees of realization right there are different people who approach him with different intensities of affection and love for him and uh, sometimes that is directed that love for krishna is directed towards other things like demigod worship or some other material desires etc so ultimately we need to understand that the supreme god is one that is krishna and the demigods are his parts are his parts and parcels are his uh, assistants in the universal administration fine and uh, krishna has delegated certain powers to these demigods to manage the material universe so they are representatives of the supreme lord so if you worship demigods basically you are approaching a representative of god but if you worship krishna directly you are approaching the supreme personality of god head then what's the problem i can approach the representative also it's good to approach god through his representative yeah that's perfectly all right but if you consider that demigod to be a representative of krishna if you consider him independent of krishna Uh, or an independent bestower of material benedictions or a person who is standing there to fulfill all your material desires 
and you disconnect that god that the demi god from the supreme god krishna then that is wrong but if you one considers demi gods to be vaishnavas and then render service to those vaishnavas uh, and through them if one uh, wants to approach krishna that's fine we have this beautiful shloka in the fourth canto rudra gita fourth canto 24th chapter 28th shloka our lord shiva says यह परम ब्रह्म सत्साक्षात त्रिगुणा जीव संगीतात भगवंतम वासुदेव प्रपन्न स प्रियो हि मे सो प्रचेतस देयर वर द सन्स ऑफ किंग प्राचीन बरहि दिस प्रचेतस वेंट टू द फॉरेस्ट टू परफॉर्म ऑस्टेरिटीज एंड टू वर्शिप लॉर्ड वासुदेव एट दैट टाइम लॉर्ड शिवा द बेस्ट ऑफ ऑल डेमी गॉड्स ही केम टू दिस प्रचेतस वॉलंटरीली विदाउट एनी इनविटेशन he came there and taught to them how to perform devotional service unto lord vasudeva he taught to them this beautiful song called rudra gita find this beautiful prayer so we need to understand that demigods are actually happy when people in general worship krishna and demigods will be very pleased to assist them and guide them okay and give them whatever counseling and guidance that they need to approach krishna that is their happiness but if you disconnect the demigod from the supreme god krishna they will also feel uncomfortable so problem is doing demigod worship considering the demigods to be independent of the supreme lord is a very uh, wrong way of worshiping krishna fine so we need to see the demigods as assistants of krishna empowered administrators of this material universe okay they are all servants of krishna so that's their constitutional position right so in just like in a uh, in a country there is a national government so different departments are given to different people there is finance minister there is a, uh, education minister and there is a military home minister so like that different different ministers are there taking care of different aspects of the state or country similarly at the universal level there is another management okay rain department indra will take care creation department brahma uh, inhalation department shiva then fire department agni uh, fire god uh, then vayu air department so like that uh, uh, different demigods are the in charges of various affairs of this material universe so they are taking care of different aspects of this universe they are managers they are administrators of the universe and who appointed all of them it is supreme lord krishna or vishnu so the supreme lord appoints these demigods and the demigods render that service to the supreme lord in that capacity by taking care of all the living entities in this world by giving them rain heat light fire and uh, other things okay for their sustenance in this world we have already discussed this in the cycle of sacrifice in the third chapter of bhagavad gita cycle of sacrifice is there right so you worship the demigods and they will give you rains and from rains you get grains you offer the grains to the supreme lord and then you eat if you don't offer them to the demigods then you are a thief you remember that series so ultimately the supreme lord is krishna and demigods are his servants so all men whose discrimination of temporary and eternal is eclipsed by their desire for quick material enjoyment worship the devatas so what is eternal and what is temporary if you lose the discrimination then you always look forward for the very quick results for that you worship some demigod and then get the re- result and then you feel very happy so the boons of the demigods are actually material and temporary because their positions are also temporary in this manvantara somebody may be a demigod somebody may be indra in this manvantara in the next manvantara someone else become indra so all the positions of the demigods are not eternal positions they are pertaining to this one day of brahma and within that one day of brahma also like one fourteenth of one day of brahma that that's like post only just like in a national government somebody may be acting like a home minister or chief minister or prime minister for certain number of years that's all after that someone else will come same is the case but krishna it's not like a post uh, it's not that okay today krishna is the supreme personality of godhead uh, after 10 years someone else will become supreme personality of godhead krishna is eternally the supreme lord and we are eternally his servants and demigods are also eternally his servants 
demigod sir serving him in certain capacity and we also have to serve him in certain capacity that we and the capacity is also bestowed by him only fine so anyone who thinks that god and the demigods are on the same level is a pashandi proposes it's like as good as an atheist even the great demigods like brahma and shiva cannot be compared to the supreme lord in fact the lord is worshiped by demigods like brahma and shiva shiva virinchi nutam sharanyam bhrityartiham pranatapala bhavabdhipotam vande mahapurushate charanaravindam in the 11th canto this beautiful verse comes shiva virinchi nutam the supreme lord krishna or vishnu they are worshiped by even brahma and shiva also they are also demigods reporting to the lord okay so the dwarka was is pre नतास्मते नाथ सदा घृ पंकज विरिंच वैरिंच सुरेन्द्र वित विरिंच वैरिंच सुरेन्द्र वित मीन विरिंच इज ब्रह्म वैरिंच इज ब्रह्म सन्स लाइक फोर कुमार नारद मुनि एंड अदर्स शिव आलो सुरेन्द्र इंद्र वित सो आल दिस ग्रेट पर्सनलिटी कम एंड ऑफर ओबेसेंस एंड टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड कृष्ण और विष्णु ओके दैट इज the position of krishna na yatra kalah prabhavet par prabho so krishna is never influenced by the time factor he is eternally the supreme personality of godhead not just in this one day of brahma or this five years of uh, five years till the next elections come it's not like that he is eternally the supreme lord so next 13th shloka even shripad shankaracharya the leader of impersonalists maintain that narayana or krishna is beyond this material creation however foolish people worship the demigods because they want immediate results 13th shloka chatur varnyam maya srishtam chatur varnyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasham guna karma vibhagasham tasya kartaram api maam tasya kartaram api maam vidya kartaram avyayam vidya kartaram avyayam krishna now says he has created this four varnas okay so chatur varnam maya srishtam four varnas are what what are the four varnas brahmana kshatriya vaishya sudra so he has created this four divisions of human society and how did he divide them guna karma vibhagashah it is not according to one's birth it is according to one's qualities and activities apparently all the one who is born in the family of brahmanas if that person <laughs> if that person does not exhibit the qualities of brahmanas if he does not engage in the activities that are suiting brahmanas he cannot be accepted as brahmana he may be called brahma bandhu right he is like a real relative of brahmanas without brahmanical qualities so a person who is engaged in brahmanical activities like patan pajan yajan yajan dana pratigraha right in teaching people and doing deity worship this and that, there are so many protocols uh, how a brahmana utilizes his time so if one is not engaged in brahmanical qualities and there are brahmanical uh, activities are this worshiping and teaching etc and there are brahmanical qualities like tolerance humility satisfaction with whatever comes of its own accord so that is called satisfaction these are brahmanical qualities if one does not exhibit this brahmanical qualities and if one is not engaged in brahmanical activities although he is born in the family of brahmanas actually speaking he cannot be accepted as a brahmana he is a brahma bandhu okay on the other hand even if someone is born in some other uh, family also non brahmanical family still if he exhibits the qualities of brahmanas so one will accept him okay so uh prabhupada writes here he says that human society is similar to any other animal society but to elevate men from animal status the above mentioned divisions are created by the lord for the systematic development of krishna consciousness ultimately this human society is divided into these four sections brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra uh, that is for the ultimate purpose of development of krishna consciousness for pleasing the supreme lord okay 
ವರ್ಣ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ವಿಭಾಗಶಃ ಸ್ವನುಷ್ಠಿತ ಧರ್ಮಸ ಸಂಸಿಧಿರ್ ಹರಿತೋಷಣ ಹರಿತೋಷಣ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಮೋಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಇಂಟು ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಂಟು ಫೋರ್ ಆಶ್ರಮಸ್ ಓಕೆ ದ ಟೆಂಡೆನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಮೈನ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಟರ್ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಗುಣ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಭಾಗಶಃ ಸಚ್ ಸಿಮ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಏಟೀನ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಏಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೀಚಸ್ ದಿ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಓಕೆ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ವರ್ಣಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪರ್ಟೇನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಸೊ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಟೆರ್ಮಿನಾಲಜಿ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಸೆಂಟರ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಎ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಿಕಲ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಡಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಈಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಿಕಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಎಫ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ದ ಸ್ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಸೊ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ನ ಅಹಂ ವಿಪ್ರೋ ನ ಚ ನರಪತಿರ್ ನಾಪಿ ವೈಶ್ಯೋ ನ ಶೂದ್ರೋ ನ ಅಹಂ ವರ್ಣಿ ನ ಚ ಗೃಹಪತಿರ್ ನಮನಸ್ಥೋ ಇತಿರ್ವ ಕಿಂತು ಪ್ರೋಜ್ಯನ್ ನಿಖಿಲ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಮೃತಾಬ್ಧೇರ್ ಗೋಪಿ ಭರ್ತು ಪದಕಮಲಯೋರ್ ದಾಸ ದಾಸ ದಾಸಾನುದಾಸ ದ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಈಸ್ ನೈದರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿಪ್ರ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ವೈಶ್ಯ ಶೂದ್ರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥ ವಾನಪ್ರಸ್ಥ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸರ್ಟೆನ್ ರೋಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸರ್ಟೆನ್ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ರೈಟ್ in one lifetime but ultimately one is not a brahmana one is not a kshatriya one is not a shudra one is not a brahmachari one is not a grahastha these are all temporary designations the pure soul is a servant of the servant of the servant of gopi bhartur the uh, master of gopis that is krishna so being krishna servant is the ultimate designation of a soul and the other designations of brahmana kshatriya vaishya sudra all these are temporary designations okay in one lifetime pertaining to one lifetime in this one lifetime one may be a brahmana in the next lifetime he can become something else he could become kshatriya in this lifetime one may be a shudra in the next lifetime he could become a brahmana we don't know it all depends on how he uses his independence to cultivate uh, uh, higher modes and give up lower modes then he will uh, he will be designated as a a uh, person who is belonging to a higher class of society okay and these are all based on one's activities and uh, consciousness and qualities uh, not according to one's birth right so dominating uh, domination of one caste by another caste is not approved here in by krishna it's all according to your qualities and your uh, activities not just based on your birth right fine so we need to understand that krishna is an impartial creator of everything everything is born of him and everything is sustained by him and everything after annihilation rests in him and he creates through the agency of gunas that is modes and prakriti that is material nature but actually he is not the creator okay because his his swarupa is beyond this gunas and prakriti but in this material world he uses this gunas and prakriti to do, to do the creation maintenance and annihilation so all these are temporary designations are pertaining to this material realm only but the soul is jeevara swarupah krishnaya nityadas okay he is nityadas that's why krishna says tasya kartaram api mam vidhi akartaram avyayam although i am the creator of this four varnas but i am
in the next line he says tasya kartaram api mam although i am the karta although i am the doer of this activity of creation of this varnas but vidhi akartaram understand me as akarta because he need not personally do all these things krishna just engages some of his uh, uh, you know energies to do the needful the modes which are his energies the prakriti the material nature which is his energy they will do the needful right vidhi akartaram i am not the doer avyayam i am inexhaustible right indestructible unchangeable so i cannot uh, i don't have to personally intervene and then perform all these things fine vidhi akartaram avyayam so now we will go to the next shloka so next so krishna himself also appeared in a kshatriya family and performs activities obligatory to a kshatriya he himself also follows okay so how to understand his activities you are saying you are the creator of this four varnas and uh, uh, does do this varnas affect you so the creator is beyond the creation that we will understand in the next verse namam karmani limpanti namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spruha name karma phale siya itimam yo bhijanati कर्म भेर्न सबध्यते नमाम कर्माणि लिम्पन्ति ऑल द कृष्णा आल्सो परफॉर्म्स एक्टिविटीज सो कृष्णा परफॉर्म्स द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ वैश्य व्हेन ही वाज इन वृंदावन एज द चाइल्ड ऑफ नंद महाराज एंड यशोदामई एंड कृष्णा आल्सो परफॉर्म्स द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ क्षत्रिय व्हेन ही इज इन मथुरा एंड द्वारका राइट ग्रैंड सन ऑफ अग्रसेन सन ऑफ वसुदेव सो बट स्टिल namam karmani limpanti all the work of uh, say said in varna that krishna is performing does not contaminate him name karma phale spruha i do not aspire for the fruits of work earlier during karma yoga we discussed elaborately that uh, performing activity with expectation of results fruits of that activity will create bondage right but krishna performs activity with absolutely no expectation of results from that activity he has no material desire to be fulfilled he has no material expectation at all and he is not looking forward for the enjoyment coming after doing that work so before performing the work he is not starting with any material desires after performing the work he is not into enjoying the results right so whether before performing the work or after performing the work krishna is not attached to that work dutifully he is doing that work just to set an example for people to follow we discussed in the third chapter so we should not consider krishna to be a person who is acting in an obligatory way krishna is not acting with some material desire he does not have a specific purpose to fulfill while acting so namam karmani limpanti therefore there is no bondage for krishna no contamination for krishna when a condition soul performs an activity he has a material desire and he is dealing with matter and he is getting contaminated and he is looking for the enjoyment of the result of that activity but all these three are not there for uh, krishna namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spruha i have no attachment to the results a karmi may be there he may do karmic activities some fruit of activities and then he want to go to heaven but krishna is not aspiring to go to heaven why he has to do any uh, karmic sacrifices so itimam yo bhijanati one who understands that krishna is not entangled by his work itimam yo abhijanati such a person also is not bound by his karma karma bhir na sabadhyati so simple meaning is krishna is not entangled by performing some activities if we understand it we will also not be entangled by performing our activities fine to understand this is very important so one has to work without attachment as krishna is doing नमे कर्म फले स्पृहा कर्म फला 
Karma is activity, karma phala is results of activity. Name karma phala is praha means I have no desire for the results of activity. Krishna says. So one needs to work dutifully without any attachment to the result. That's what Krishna is recommending. Being full of eternal bliss as the Supreme Lord, the only reason for Krishna's work is to encourage the mankind. Okay. So, you do some dutiful work. Don't do whimsical work. Regulate your work. Streamline your work. Work according to the instructions of scriptures. See, I am also doing it. So, just to set an example for common people to follow, Krishna is doing all these prescribed activities when he is playing the roles of a Kshatriya or a Brahmana or a Vaishya, etc. So, but he is not attached to that work and he is not entangled by that work. So, Krishna's activities of creation, maintenance and destruction are in response to the karmas of the Jiva. It's not Krishna is obliged. He has no desire for results of his actions. He who knows this is not bound. And another point is Krishna is not partial to any uh, living entities also. The living entity is responsible for his own activities. Okay, you are not entangled by your activities. Why we are supposed to be entangled by our activities? You are entangling us. You have created a system that entangles us. People cannot blame Krishna like that. He is not entangled by his activities because he has no desires while performing that activity and he is not enjoying the results of that activities. Because we have desires behind our activity and we have a mentality to enjoy the results of that activity, we are bound. When they, wherever there is attachment, there is bondage. Attachment leads to entanglement. And in fact, the attachment itself is an entanglement. So, because Krishna has no material attachment, there is no entanglement for him. And when uh, Krishna's, the karmic, the system that Krishna has created is entangling some people, it is not that Krishna is being partial to someone or uh, harsh to someone. Fine. The living entity is responsible for his own activities. Krishna has given some minute independence to everybody and it's up to us how to use it. Krishna will not interfere with that. Okay. So, the Lord only gives him facilities through the agency of material nature. The rain pours water on the seeds and according to the type of seed, they all sprout into different plants. Now, same water is coming on the uh, land. And uh, same land is also there. Land is same, the rain that is coming on the land is also same. But different seeds will give different types of plants. Are, I planted these two seeds side by side and here is a rose plant and here is a shavanti plant. What is this disparity? What is this uh, partiality in God's creation? No. The plant that came out is according to the seed. Similarly, two people may sit in the same class and same class is being heard by them in the same classroom under the same roof and the book is also same. Different people will get different understanding. They may not get uh, uh, same understanding depending on their own depth and dedication to the subject matter. Right? All of you will not get 50 out of 50. Somebody may get 49 out of 50. Somebody may get this out, uh, 20 out of 50. And even if two people get same mark out of 50 out of 50, you compare their answer scripts. Totally different. Right? At least. There's some essence is common, <laughs> but the details are different. Your language is different. So, everybody is unique. Every living entity is unique. And in terms of his being a part and parcel of Krishna as Satchidananda, there is oneness in all living entities. But the kind of natures and proclivities of different people are totally different. Accordingly, they engage in different kinds of activities and they get different kinds of results. Okay? So, there is no partiality on God's part when the living entities are acting differently. So, 15 sloka. That's what Prabhupada says. The Lord is never partial to any living entity. The living entity is responsible for his own activities. 15 sloka. Evam gnatva kritam karma Evam gnatva kritam karma Urvai rapim bhukshubhim Urvai rapim bhukshubhim Kuru karmai vatasmatvam Kuru karmai vatasmatvam Urvai hi purvataram kritam Urvai hi purvataram kritam Evam gnatva kritam karma Knowing evam gnatva means Knowing this. What is that this? Whatever he has described in the previous sloka. 
the word evam is referring to 14th sloka he says in the 14th sloka that my work does not bind me krishna says like this so evam gnatva knowing this that krishna's work does not bind him kritam karma you perform your prescribed duties purvair api mumukshibihi and like this so many people in the past have done activities so many mumukshus means aspirants of liberation have done uh, have done their activities with this understanding that krishna is never entangled by his activities clear first two lines kuru karmaiva tasmatvam similarly you also perform activities like this with this understanding then purvaihi purvataram kritam following the footsteps of the people who have done like this previously so there are so many liberated souls in the ancient times they worked without desires and they also understood that krishna works without desires and krishna is not entangled so they implemented similar consciousness in their own lives so they are also not entangled although they are working there is no entanglement for them because there is no attachment to results of work and there is no material desires while performing work same as krishna so they are not they never entangled so now krishna will explain why one's action should be without any desires so now in this purport prabhas says to retire from the activities of krishna consciousness and to sit aloof to make a show of krishna consciousness is less important than actually engaging in the field of activities for the sake of krishna so one has to do his duties for the sake of krishna than giving up the duties in the name of being krishna conscious okay so irresponsibility towards one act one's duties is not endorsed by krishna krishna always says do dutiful work as an offering to me krishna doesn't say you should just abandon uh, your work so when krishna said sarva dharman parityadya mam ekam sharanam vraja basically he is saying that take shelter of me and do your dharma because krishna said sarva dharman parityadya that is the conclusion of gita and uh, after hearing this what did arjuna do he did fighting he did not give up fighting okay so one has to perform one's duties as an offering to krishna but that duty has to be performed without any attachment without any material desires okay right? so we completed this section where krishna explained that he is the creator and culmination of all paths uh, in the 11th shloka krishna said yathama prapadyanti so krishna will reciprocate according to the mood of the worshipper and in the 12th verse he said so many people go to demi gods although i am there to reciprocate with the mood of the worshipper but the different people go to different demi gods why do they go because they want quick results of their material desires that's why they go and krishna says later that i have created four varnas brahmana kshatriya vaishya sudra okay and i divided them according to guna and karma and but although i have done this i am not the creator okay i do it through my energies and whatever activities i am doing in the 14th verse he says that whatever i am activities i am doing they do not bind me because i have no attachment to them so if you also are in this consciousness that you perform activities as a matter of duty but you are not very much attached to the results or you don't have a material desire while performing activity and also you know that i am not entangled then you will also not be entangled 